Namaskar and it's a proud privilege for Akashwani to welcome uh, Mike Massimino who is a former NASA astronaut and uh, who made history as one of the first uh, astronauts to you know post onto the social media <laughs> yeah. from space and yeah. you tweeted actually which is now known as X yeah. and uh, during your strides or your odyssey in space you played a key role in servicing the Hubble Space uh, Telescope you've also been a professor at the Columbia University mm -hmm. you're a prominent speaker and he's also an advocate for space exploration thank you very much for joining us in the studios today uh, uh, Mike and uh, this is indeed a pleasure and you know India also uh, is been a big player where space launches yeah. and uh, uh, space uh, technology is concerned we are one of the few countries along with the United States and yeah. others to have cutting-edge technology yeah. uh, would we, we would request you to please share your experiences as an astronaut with NASA and your uh, challenges and memorable experiences too in space sure. uh, well thanks thanks very much for having me it's a pleasure to be here uh, learning more about what India is up to it was kind of fun. my first time in the country I've flown over the country a lot in space and looked down and admired it so it's great to be here in person uh, I was uh, with NASA as an astronaut for uh, 18 years from 1996 until uh, 2014 and I was on two missions both of my missions were on the space shuttle to the uh, Hubble Space Telescope and I uh, got the spacewalk which was uh, quite an experience a lot a lot of hard work a bit stressful but but quite an experience going outside in your spacesuit and working on the on the telescope so those uh, that's what my space flights were about and now as you said I'm, I'm uh, teaching here I teach at in New York City at Columbia as far as memorable things go, I, I think most memorable for me were the, were the spacewalks and mm -hmm. uh, all the preparation and the training that went into them and then going out there and executing the plan and not everything goes according to uh, the way you expect it. We always said every spacewalk is a little bit, there's always, a little bit different. There's always something that you don't expect or something that's a little bit different than, than uh, what you trained for and you have to you know, move and accommodate and change the plan, but, um, but they all seem to work out in the end. Right. Uh, as you know, India's ISRO, the Indian Space Research Organization, mm -hmm. is also planning to send astronauts into space yeah. uh, very soon. And uh, the uh, mission is known as uh, Mission Gaganyan. Mm -hmm. So how do you view this? Uh, I'm, I'm very excited about it. I think that it's, it's great to be able to send spacecraft and satellites and what they did on the moon with, with Chandaran was, was spectacular. But there's always a, something a little bit different about sending people there because then we you're sending a representative to 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 go there and it's like everyone gets to go personally so I'm very excited for India to be doing this I'm particularly excited because he, the commander of that mission is a very good friend of mine right. Peggy Whitson was my astronaut classmate I've known her since 1996 right which is a long time now how long mm. it's almost 30 years yes <laughs> I've known her a long time she's a very good friend of mine and I know she's looking forward to the to that mission uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that for for that reason but for for my friend Peggy but also flying with uh, with your countrymen is going to be I think very exciting for for a lot of people around the world not just here in India uh, from uh, your perspective or since uh, mm -hmm. from NASA's perspective when Chandrayaan third mm -hmm. landed on the surface of yeah. the moon in August uh, 21st yeah. August uh, 2023 yeah. in yeah. the Luna uh, the South Pole of the moon how do you view that I thought it was spectacular uh, for a number of reasons. One is uh, India was only the fourth country to be able to land something on the moon. But they went to a very interesting part of the moon down by the South Pole. And the interest there is that we think that there is uh, ice trapped in that area. So uh, water ice. So that water is important for us for life, but also maybe for propulsion systems to use as for fuel in the future. So that is a very interesting area of the moon, but it's hard to get there. Uh, it's a, it's a rough terrain. It's not as easy as some of the other places. When we sent uh, the, the humans that were sent there, when the United States sent the astronauts there back in the late 1960s, and over 50 years ago, in the early 1970s, they more or less stayed in the middle of the, of the moon, where it's a little bit easier to, to land and communicate with people there. So it's a, it's a more difficult place to get to, and they were able to do that. 
So it's quite an accomplishment. I think also the the excitement it generated here in India and back in the United States uh, was was significant. I think uh, that type of accomplishment gets everybody excited. And you can do some great things scientifically <coughs> with science and engineering, but to do something like that, like landing on the moon, really gets people excited. Uh, recently, India also successfully docked two satellites <coughs> in space. Yeah and became the fourth nation to complete this mission. It is uh, considered a milestone. And uh, how do you, uh, you know, view mm -hmm. this uh, achievement of India? Yeah, r uh, rendezvousing and docking to uh, two spacecraft is not easy. Uh, it, to be very precise in orbit like that, it, 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 the orbital mechanics don't always make sense. If you, if you try to catch up to something, go quickly, you'll go to a higher orbit, and then you'll get further away from it. So, and if you try to slow down, you'll, you'll drop down and then speed up and get ahead of it. It's, orbits are not easy things to... Uh, India is also uh, working to, uh, on setting up its yep. own space station very soon mm -hmm. by, uh, say, 2035 or 40. Mm -hmm. So how do you view this... Uh, development. I, I think that the um, you know, we have the International Space Station, of course, which, which is your the the Indian astronaut will be going to in a few months. Um, I I, th I think the wave of the future is going to be space stations for more economic development, and uh, I think governments are going to be looking toward going uh, further away to the moon, as India has done in the United States as well, and others. Uh, so I think that that's the the future in space and low Earth orbit. I think it's going to be more of an economic venture. Um, and I think it's now open to more and more companies and and countries to, to do that work. And, uh, the, and then the next goal, uh, for people anyway, is moon and beyond. But I, yeah, I think that would be, uh, that would be tremendous, uh, getting more more people active in the research and the development that can be done in low Earth orbit at space stations. Right. I mm -hmm. uh, would also like to know from you uh, that uh, very soon, maybe in a couple of years, uh, both uh, ISRO, that is the Indian Space Research mm -hmm. Organization, and NASA would be launching a joint uh, rocket called NISAR mm -hmm. uh, aboard an Indian launch vehicle. So how do you uh, look at uh, this uh, development and uh, in, what are the areas that both uh, India and the United States can, you know, collaborate in using mm -hmm. space for uh, global good. Yeah, I, I think one of the advantages we have of the space program that's often overlooked is uh, international cooperation. Uh, the, the space station, the International Space Station, was initially uh, something called Space Station Freedom, which was a mainly a United States space station, and that was under development in the 1980s. And it was had cost overruns. It wasn't going very well with its development, and then it was changed to the International Space Station, where the United States began working with the countries of Europe and Japan and Canada and, the, and Russia as well. And that made it a much stronger program because you're taking uh, resources and, and intellect and, and ideas from around the world. And uh, every country had different experiences in space. So we were able to pull those together. And out of that came the International Space Station program, which has been a very successful program. Also for international cooperation and friendship. And you can agree on technical problems. A lot of times, political issues might not always align between countries. But when you have a common goal, when it's a technical goal, and I think space is the best thing that that countries can cooperate on. I think you can agree on that and you can move forward with your relationships as well. So I think it's it's really a good thing that the United States and, and India will cooperate on this as you describe and I hope that that does happen. Um, they're two great countries, two very big powerful countries with a lot of smart people and a lot of technological break, breakthroughs in both countries. So if we can cooperate on a common goal to explore space together, I think that's good for our countries, but also for the whole world. Right. Uh, we have uh, time and again, that is India has time and again emphasized on the uh, secure use of space and space being free from any kind of uh, violence or yeah, intimidation. Yeah. 
and also India is a big proponent of a clean space that is we have yeah. a lot of uh, debris in this space <laughs> yeah. and India is working on do you think this is a, a, an area where both the United States and India can collaborate to clean up the debris which is there yeah there's a lot of stuff up there we were very concerned even when I was flying you know, over 15 years ago we were worried about debris impacts the Hubble Space Telescope hits the there are, had hit things the shuttle had the space station has impacts it's a problem um, um, and cleaning it up is not easy because things are at different orbits and traveling at different speeds and you can't maneuver around as well as you'd like. So I think the cleanup is important and also not making it worse. So for example, with the Hubble Space Telescope on the last mission, we attached a docking ring to it so that when its useful life is over, a rocket motor can go up there and guide it back to Earth, burning it up in the atmosphere so it doesn't create any debris and doesn't pose any hazard to people on Earth. And I think you bring up a good point that, and I'm glad to, that India is doing this, when, they, when you launch something, you need to be responsible for it. Not only getting it there and having it function and work, but also disposing of it when its right. life is over, getting it out of there in a safe way, right. and not cluttering up the the, uh, the environment worse up there. You know, we have different environmental issues here. It's about keeping our environment clean and clean water and air and so on. But up there, the debris poses a real hazard to anything, to 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 satellites, to spacecraft, to people. So absolutely, you need to be responsible. And I, yes. I think uh, we're at that point where yes. we have to be that, and also think about how we can clean right. it up. That's a tough problem, though. Uh, what is your take on when would uh, Sunita Williams be back on Earth? I hope she's back <laughs> soon. I she's a very good friend of mine. I got to work okay. with her for many years, and I've been exchanging email with her. Over right. The, uh, saying hi and telling her we care about her, of course, mm -hmm. and she knows that. I, I think the latest uh, that I've heard is that the, the, the crew that will be there to relieve them will be launching on May, March the 12th. So they usually have about a week or so of handover. So I think maybe the third week of March in about a month's time, I think she should be back well, here. Well, that's very, very, yeah. let's uh, she's pray a great, that, that She's a great happens. lady. Yes, yeah, she's yes, a good absolutely. friend, a great lady, and uh, you also be very proud of her here in India. Absolutely. And in the United States, of course, we're absolutely. proud of her too. In in conclusion, what uh, would be your message to young minds who would mm -hmm. uh, like to pursue a yeah. career in space? Uh, f find your find your passion. See what you're interested in, and 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 explore whatever you you can. Especially in school, I visited a school today here in India, public school, wonderful place. The students are very eager to learn. The instructors, the teachers are there, very dedicated. So I would encourage uh, young people of India to to study hard, learn as much as they can, do as best as you can. Don't worry about doing a certain, you know, this or great or this. Or that. Just do the best that you can. Learn as much as you can. Develop a passion, and don't give up when things get tough. School is tough. It's not. not it's the hardest thing I've had to do was was learn in school. You know, after that, it was life became easier. Once I was <laughs> through with school, I went to a lot of school. Right. But but those are where you're going to find your challenges. So don't give up when you know. Reach out and get help from your teachers or your parents or your friends, and and keep going. But pursue it because it's worth it. There's it's an extraordinary world we live. And, and technology, which, are, you know, there's such a great technological foundation here in India. Uh, take advantage of that and pursue whatever it is that you're interested in, whether it's engineering or science or medicine or whatever it might be. Pursue that. And uh, those, all those paths that I mentioned in all STEM fields yes. lead to space. So, so keep an eye on what, what's, what's available for you right. in space as well. On that very positive note, and I'm sure that both India and the United States uh, can collaborate on STEM, as you mentioned, the science, technology, mm -hmm. engineering, and mathematics, yep. and also uh, space. And hopefully, one day, if not, we can, co if we do not conquer, but at least we will be there as close collaborators yes. in, in, at the final frontier. And, and certainly on this next you. mission. Thank that you, you mentioned. Mike Massimo, for joining us in Akashwani podcast yep. today and sparing your valuable time. It was indeed a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank Namaskar. You. Thank you for having me.